Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video we're going to be doing another bit of a project here on the $5 Windows 98 PC because we're going to be taking a look at a couple of Gateway backup CDs. Now these were CDs that would have come with a Gateway 2000 computer. Both of these discs actually predate this computer because they are branded with Gateway 2000 branding as opposed to just Gateway branding. So this was before they had changed their name to uh, just Gateway and dropped the 2000 from their name. So these would have come with uh, all of the software that was pre-installed on the computer when you originally purchased it, so that if you were to reinstall Windows, you could get all of that software back up and running again very easily. And both of these CDs come as a very generous viewer donation from John the Retro Server Guy. I'll have his YouTube channel and his blog linked down below if you want to go check them out. Huge thank you again, John, for sending these over to me, and without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into this. So John sent over two ISO images of these CDs, but he also took photos of the discs themselves so we can take a look at what they actually looked like. So this is the first one right here. This one includes Microsoft Bob version 1.0, which I assume is the Gateway 2000 edition, Microsoft Entertainment Packs volume 1 through 4, and and Microsoft Publisher 95. And you can see by the copyright date here and by the fact that it comes with Publisher 95 that this disc, and well, you're gonna see both of these discs, um, predate this computer by about five years. This computer again came out in the year 2000 and these discs likely came with a Gateway 2000 computer that was released in 1995, so maybe early 1996. This is the other one right here. You see it's got this uh, th this red color as opposed to green here. Uh, just so you can kind of tell them apart. This one comes with Microsoft Works 4.0 and Microsoft Money 4.0. And again, the copyright date is uh, 81 through 95. So uh, yes, and here's your part number right here. What's also neat about these, if you haven't been able to tell, is they would have come with Gateway 2000 computers that were sold in the UK and Ireland, as you can see by these phone numbers right here. So these would not have come with Gateway 2000 machines that were released in the US. So that is pretty cool. So we're gonna start off with this one right here that includes Bob and Enter the Microsoft Entertainment Packs and Microsoft Publisher. So I've got that burned to a CD right here. We're going to put this into the drive and get started with it. So we have taken a look at Microsoft Bob and the Entertainment Packs in dedicated videos before. Publisher 95, we have not. Now this was before because Publisher 95, or well, Microsoft Publisher in general would eventually become bundled with Microsoft Office. At this time, it was not. It was a standalone application. Now, there was such a thing as Microsoft Office 95, but that did not include Publisher. Publisher was sold separately, though it was compatible with Microsoft Office. Uh, so that's what we're gonna jump into. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll just close out of this. We'll leave this one open so we can refer back to it. And we're gonna open up my computer and we've got the disk and the drive right here. So we've got some folders here. We've got Entertainment Packs 1 through 4, MS Bob, and MS Pub 95 for Publisher 95. So there is not a single installer that will install everything for us. We have to go through and manually install these, which is no problem. So we'll start with the Entertainment Pack number 1. And I guess this is going to be the standard version. I don't see why we'd have anything different here. This is the standard installer. So there we go. Entertainment pack installation complete. Entertainment pack number two. And we'll just install this to the same directory. And it'll create a program group because this was designed for Windows 3.1. So the games work perfectly fine on Windows 95, and well, this is Windows 98 that we're running these on, so uh, they obviously work just fine uh, here as well. We'll jump on to Entertainment Pack 3. So what the goal of this video is, is really just to get these programs installed. We'll take a look at a few of the programs that we've not taken a look at in detail before. We, we might briefly open up Microsoft Bob and some of the Entertainment Pack games, but I really just want to get all these installed uh, because I do want to get this computer. Again, these discs would have not come with this computer, but I think it, it would be cool to get all of this software on this computer because these discs, like I said, were originally shipped with gateway machines and all this software would have come on whatever gateway machine that this that these discs were shipped with. I assume multiple models, like they're not gonna make just one set of discs for one machine. 
the there's no uh, identifying marks for like any particular model number i mean this is the part number down here uh, of this disc but there's no like it doesn't say gateway 2000 model number whatever this would have been this is kind of like a generic disc that would have come with uh, multiple different models of gateway machines not this one though like i said because this computer is much newer than these discs but we're going to try to get these installed and just take a look at some of this software and yeah just have fun with it so we're waiting for the entertainment pack 3 setup to finish it looks like it's frozen here which wouldn't be an, an mjd video without some sort of problem arising we have the program manager opened up here it looks like it is fully responsive uh We'll just close out of it, maybe? I don't know, maybe it's waiting for us to... No, it looks like it's totally frozen. We'll just let it sit here. I do not want to kill the process uh, immediately. We'll just we'll just let it finish, and, and we'll see if, see if it can finish. Entertainment Pack 1 does not create a program group. Version 2 does, which Windows 98 will just treat as a start menu uh, program category or program group here. Uh, normally, if you were installing this under Windows 3.1, it would appear as a program group in the program manager. Um, but these, so this is Entertainment Pack number two, but we can still access Entertainment Pack number one by going into C Drive, and it's going to be under WEP right here. And so all the games are in here because, like, if I go into programs, we've got Tut's Tomb and Jigsawed Rodents Revenge. So you see, here's Tut's Tomb, Jigsawed and Rodents Revenge will be somewhere in here. And that's because I chose to install them to the same directory, but Entertainment Pack 2 just creates its own program group, which is nice. So I don't know what's going on here with uh, Entertainment Pack 3. It looks like the setup has, I mean, yeah, this ain't doing anything. So we'll, uh, we'll open up Task Manager. This is set up right here, we'll just end task. And okay, so now that's gone. We'll just try to run it again. Okay, so it installed them. For whatever reason, it's trying to create the program group right now, but it did install because Fuji Golf, yep, Fuji Golf is right here and we can launch it. So it's just having trouble creating the program group. Yeah, the program manager was responding before, now it's just not not responding. It should not take this long to create a program group. You saw how, how quickly entertainment pack number two did. So we'll just end the process again. Uh, so here is, we'll end setup here. And that might, yeah, so now Program Manager is no longer frozen, so we'll close out of that. But we got the games installed. Like, you see it was able to go through actually copying the files. It just wasn't able to create the program group, which isn't that big of a deal. So Entertainment Pack 4 has two discs, and you can see that because these all came on, on floppy diskettes originally, so they're the contents of, of them are able to fit on this CD because obviously there's much more space. So here's disc number one. So we'll just load set up here. I believe this one, yeah, this one has a, a more uh, graphical, it's got this like full screen setup. You guys have seen this probably a million times before. Here's Entertainment Pack 4. This did create a program group for us and it should, yep, it's copying uh, shortcuts to it right now. So we got Jez Ball, Maxwell's Maniac, Chips Challenge, which one's going to be next? Dr. Blackjack. Tic Tac Drop. Go figure. And that's it. Setup succeeded. Most of the games in the entertainment pack require a sound card. Oh, that's right. We have speakers now. So we can actually take a look at these games as they were meant to be experienced with sound, which is wonderful. So we'll move on to next up is Microsoft Bob, I believe. So, uh, yep, MS Bob. So we'll go in here and we will launch setup. So this, I'm pretty sure, is gonna be the exact same setup wizard because we've installed the Gateway 2000 version of Microsoft Bob actually on this same computer before, and it's gonna complain that it appears your computer has insufficient memory. It needs at least eight megabytes of RAM. We have uh, 512 megabytes, so we will proceed with the installation, continue, uh, we're going to say no. We don't want to automatically start Bob. Microsoft Bob gives you the home you've always wanted. Wow, if only that were true. All right, so setup has finished, or well, at least it almost is. Just got to create the shortcuts for the start menu program group. So there we go. And sure, we'll restart the machine. Why not? We can hear that glorious Windows 98 startup sound again once we once we load back in.
There we go, isn't that beautiful? Go back to the disc and MS Publisher 95. This one I believe asks you for a product key, which John was uh, was generous enough to provide. So we're gonna install it to the default directory, that's fine. All right, good news everybody, we got Publisher installed, so we're gonna click on OK. And before we launch any of these programs, I am going to install the programs on the other disk here, which, oh, since we restarted the computer, we gotta open this image back up. So this right here, oh no, that's the wrong one. This one right here is the disk that contains Microsoft Works 4.0 and Microsoft Money 4.0. So I we've not really taken a look at these programs on this channel before. I think Microsoft Money came with uh, the software that was installed on the Packard Bell when it originally shipped from the factory. So which obviously we restored it to that state in my Windows 95 25th anniversary video, which I'll have that up here if you want to go check it out. But we didn't really take a look at it in detail. So we got MS Money 4, MS Works 4, we're gonna go to MS Money 4. And here we go, set up right here. Default destination, that's fine with me. Oh, look at this, we got a Microsoft Bob style thing where it's moved the continue button up here. Although this is off to the left, but we, like we just saw in Microsoft Bob how there was no, like you got to a screen where the next button was moved to that Bob face up here. That's the button that you had to click. Well, Microsoft Money's done the same thing, which is quite interesting actually. Uh, so, yeah, checking for necessary disk space. There we go. This setup looks pretty similar to Microsoft Bob now that I think about it. I mean, the background color is different. The font used up here is different, but the layout of it is very similar. And last but not least, Microsoft Works 4. Let's get this installed. So Microsoft Works is quite interesting. If you've never heard of it, this is a productivity suite, very similar to Microsoft Office. In fact, it has programs that you could say kind of compete with Microsoft Office. There's a word processor, there's a spreadsheet program, and we're gonna you know take a look at these once the program installs, but these programs don't have as many features as their Microsoft Office counterparts. So the spreadsheet program in Works is not exactly the same as Excel. It's not really designed to compete with Excel. It's more of a lower cost version of Excel. And this software was less expensive than Microsoft Office. It was kind of positioned as a cheaper alternative. And it was very common to see this installed on OEM computers because it was very very cheap for the OEMs to pre-install this. Uh, so this creates a shortcut on the desktop to Microsoft Works 4.0. We'll just start out with this, why not? Now, unlike Microsoft Office, Microsoft Works does not have individual shortcuts to the word processor and the spreadsheet program, etc. Like if I go into the start menu here and go into the Works 4.0 folder, there's not a shortcut to launch the spreadsheet or the word processor directly. You have to launch into this main kind of combined interface by just launching Microsoft Works 4.0. And then from here, you've got a couple of different ways to open up documents and create documents. So this task wizards thing on the far left here, this is where you can create documents with templates. So say you wanna write a letter, you want a letterhead that you can tweak you know, with your company information or whatever. You've got a resume template right here. You can start from scratch. You can go down to billing and you've got accounts, bids. You've got all these different templates here, statements. Then you've got existing documents. This will obviously let you open up documents you've already created. And then if you just want to launch into a specific program, you can go to works tools over here. And then you've got word processor, spreadsheet, database, and communication. So we'll launch the word processor. So it opens up with this help uh, documentation over here on the right side. We can just close out of that by clicking this button here. And it functions just like you would expect a word processor to function. I can type here, uh, this is Michael MJD. I can even press F7 to get a spell check, which is nice. That is a feature that Word also has. But obviously, like I said, this does not contain every feature that Word has. But if all you needed was a simple word processing program, Microsoft Works might do just fine for you. So we'll go back to, we'll go to the new menu here, and this brings up that same task launcher. Let's say we want to create employee timesheet. Let's create an employee timesheet. And here is my weekly timesheet. 
So you can go through and put in how many hours that you worked on each day, and I'm sure you guys all know how this works. Uh, so what's nice about Microsoft Works is because Works is one individual program with all of, like it's got the word processor and the spreadsheet program contained within the Works program itself, you can have this spreadsheet open and then very easily switch back to the document without leaving the program. Obviously, I mean, you can have Word and Excel open at the same time, but that's just how uh, Works differs from Office because everything is contained within this Works program itself. So that is a brief look at Microsoft Works. What else do we got here? So we've got money. Let's jump into Publisher first, Microsoft Publisher. So this opens up with a very similar interface here that we saw in Microsoft Works. We've got that same page wizard where we can select from a type of document that we want to create. And so these are all essentially templates. And we've got blank page to just create a blank document or open up an existing publication. So let's say we want to create, a, let us create a calendar, why not? So we'll select. And this is going to go through this page wizard. We briefly touched on this in the Microsoft Bob retrospective because Microsoft Bob can actually trace its roots back to Microsoft Publisher because Publisher was the very first Microsoft program to include wizards, which, I mean, I'm sure we all know what wizards are. They're these right here that walk you through how to do things. So this is going to walk me through how to create a calendar. So it's going to say, would you like a single month or a whole year on each page? We'll do a single month. It gives you all these options to choose from and it creates the document for you as opposed to you having to do this all yourself. Uh, so yeah, Publisher, very first Microsoft program to include Wizards, which is pretty cool. So we'll just like, we'll, we'll do this one here, why not? Bold, and we'll do, let's do Landscape. And no, I don't want to leave room for a picture, I don't have any on here. Do you want room to write in your calendar? Uh, yes, we do and type the year you want. So from 1800 to 2200. That's interesting. What happens if we try to type 2300? Will this freak out here? Nope, you have to enter a year between 1800 and 2200. So, well, when the year 22001 comes along, I'm not gonna be able to use Publisher 95. That's unfortunate. But we can type the current year, 2020. That works totally fine. September, uh, names of days, we'll just leave it abbreviated, that's fine. Uh, oh, I skipped one. Do you want your weeks to begin on Sunday? We'll do Sunday, which English, what English, <laughs> which language, English, and create it. There we go, now it's gonna create our document here. So it's finished there, it's asking us if we want help to add our own text and pictures, we'll just say no. And here is our calendar here. So yeah, so we could print this out, we could add, you know, we could change the font or whatever if we wanted to. So say we wanna change the font to, let's see what font looks interesting here. Uh, MT Extra, uh, maybe not that one. <laughs> um, Tahoma, let's do Tahoma, there we go. So we can update and there we go. So yeah, you can tweak this, you know, change the font, change whatever you want. And yeah, that's a brief look at Publisher. We'll go ahead and close out of that. And sure, we'll save our changes. Let's uh, go up to, let's go to, oh, let's see here. Let's just go to my documents and we'll save this as Cal. We'll save it. And there we go. So next up, let's jump into Microsoft Money very briefly. So we'll open this up. We get that nice uh, startup sound there. So Microsoft Money, if you've never heard of it, this is a finance application. You can probably get that from the name. So it's going to allow you to manage your budget, uh, manage all your bank accounts, the bills that you have to pay, etc. I mean, it's a money management program. So I went ahead and added an account. So I go to my account register here and uh, yeah, here's my credit card. So when you make a purchase with your credit card, I just go to new here. And let's say I went to Goodwill, just for the sake of example, and let's say that I spent uh, $15. And you can choose the category here. So let us say that this is going to be um, miscellaneous. That's, that's probably fine. And then you've got a memo. So let's just say for the sake of example that I bought the 98 PC speakers from Goodwill. I did not. And uh, once you've got all that in, you just press enter. So there you go, now my balance is $15. Then you can also say that, I don't know, maybe I returned it and Goodwill actually accepted my return. And so let's say that they gave me a credit. So 
can type goodwill, $15. Let's say that I, you know, returned the 98 PC speakers and they gave me my money back. There we go. So yeah, now it's over here in the credit category. So yeah, that's how you add your expenses. And this is just my, my one account that I've added. You can add multiple accounts like checking and savings accounts and loans and all sorts of stuff. Uh, and you can go to like go back here to oh this is going to take me back to the screen I was at before but here's the main menu so you've got your payment calendar which would show you when all your bills are due if you enter all that information investment portfolio uh, I haven't put, put all my investments in here but if you wanted to keep track of them there's a way to do it you've got planning wizards payees and categories so this is where you can add like if you know, say you want to add like your own category in here, like the one that isn't already in here, you can add your own. Um, yeah, lots of stuff that you can do with it. Then you can generate reports. So let's say, what do I have? What is my net worth right now? Oh, that's pretty bad. Well, we'll go back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so pretty cool. Yeah, Microsoft Money. Now, Microsoft Money was discontinued in 2009, so there were newer versions that were released, but the name was later reused for the Windows 8 application. There was a Windows 8 Metro UI or Modern UI app that was called Microsoft Money, but it was uh, kind of similar to the news program in that it would show you finance and stock news and all of that. So it wasn't the same program. Uh, it was just using its its name. So when you close out of it, it asks you to create a backup. We'll just say no because uh, none of that information is real. Um, and we'll go to programs here. What else do we got? Okay, Microsoft Home Sampler. I wonder if this was installed with Bob. Welcome to Microsoft Home. On this CD, you'll be able to sample... I'll turn this down here so it's not so loud. ...make your home PC more useful and enjoyable. Find out how you can do what you want to do. So, Microsoft Home was a line of software kind of meant to be used in the home. So, there was education software, there was kids software, or even entertainment. Uh, and Microsoft Bob was one of those programs because it, it, it is branded as a Microsoft Home program. So, we can go to all products here, and I believe Microsoft Bob will be in here. You see, we've got like Microsoft Arcade, the Entertainment Pack, we've got the Creative Writer. Uh, Bob should be somewhere in here. Uh, there's Microsoft Money, Microsoft Golf. I guess Microsoft Bob, I guess it was probably discontinued at this point because Bob did not last very long. But yeah, Microsoft Home, this might be interesting to do an entire video on. I'll have to add this to my ideas list, like go through the history of the Microsoft Home brand. Uh, yeah, let me know if you guys want to see that. that. That might be pretty cool to do. So we'll close out of that. It's just a, a CD sampler. It's going to give you information about uh, all of those programs. And here is the credits and copyright information here. So we'll let it scroll through that. And there we go. So that's the home or the CD sampler. This is on the desktop here. It creates a shortcut. When I saw that, I, I, I thought that this had something to do with Microsoft Bob because there is a additional program, the uh, greetings card program for Microsoft Bob. I thought that this might have something to do with that, but it doesn't. Um, I guess we can briefly launch Microsoft Bob before we end off the video here. Well, just why not? Let's just open up and see. There you go. Microsoft Home. Uh, oh, this is, that's interesting. This is not the Gateway 2000 version. There's no branding down here. Huh. Uh, we'll just log in as a guest. I don't feel like going through the whole like, account setup program. The Gateway 2000 version has the branding on the door, so this is not that version, which is interesting because this came on a Gateway branded CD. I thought for sure this was going to be the Gateway 2000 version, but guess not. But yeah, there's Microsoft Bob. Uh, I'm not going to go through this entire program here because, like I said, I've done a whole video on it if you want to go check it out. Multiple videos, actually, over the years. Um, and I guess we can briefly take a look at some of the games as well. So let's go to WEP. And now that we have sound, we can open up, like, let's just open up Jez Ball. That's a pretty fun game. So we'll open up Jez Ball. And now we're going to get sound. Check it out. So... Oh, that sucks. <laughs> yes, I do want to start a new game. Ooh, that was close. There we go. So, yeah. Here's Jez Ball. Oh, man. Oh, no. 
Okay, that was close. Ooh, that was really close. Oh, man. Yeah, that's that's just ball. We'll put in my name here. Why not? And now we'll just close out of that. What other games have sound? Um, I mean, most of the cart like Ski Free does not have sound. We can go through here. There's no no sound here. Yeah, even if you run into something, there's no sound. And the card games, I'm going to guess, don't really have any sound either. So here's Golf. Um, yeah, I'm not going to have sound. That's okay. You don't really need it for a, for a card game. But it's pretty nice that we're now able to experience these games and, you know, check out these games on here with proper sound. Well, there you have it, guys. That is a look at all of the programs that are contained on these two Gateway 2000 restore or backup CDs rather. Before we get out of here though, I want to give a, a huge thank you to all of you guys for 100,000 subscribers because that is just a mind-boggling number. That is an insane amount of people. It's really crazy to think that this is the first video that is going to be seen in 100,000 people's sub boxes. So to all of you guys, if you've been here since the very beginning, if you if you just subscribed yesterday, thank you so much for making this a reality for me. I can't wait to continue making videos for you guys, and I've got some some videos that I'm really excited about uh, that are gonna be coming soon, and I, and I hope you guys will enjoy those. Uh, one of those is Gateway Related. I won't really spoil much, but uh, hopefully you guys will uh, enjoy that one. But uh, guys, just as always, thank you so much for watching and for all that you have done for this channel. And as always, I'll see you all in the next video.